have a problem if no one else can help and if you can find them maybe you can watch the video team. we are live welcome everybody to this episode of the vape team i just sounded like ruby Roo for a second there <laughs> i don't know what the fuck is the matter with me but welcome everyone um I got my boys with me. We got Mike Vapes, a.k.a. Yes, Gomez Hits That Shit. And we got BK, the killer, the serial thriller. Go ahead, BK. What's going on, guys? Look at that beautiful guy. Everybody's feeling good. We're looking good. And, man, we feel sexy. So welcome to this episode, guys. You know, this is going to be another beautifully, perfectly unorganized show brought to you by three degenerates that have no clue what we're doing or saying. At least I'm speak. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to speak for my friends here. I'm going to speak for myself. Um, but you know what? That was the whole purpose of this. Three vapors shooting the shit, talking about vaping, and uh, helping each other out. And you guys are here to join us. I have you guys over here with the live feed, UFC style, and uh, we're doing it. So anyway, why don't we do this? Why don't we start off, guys, by talking about what the fuck we're vaping? How about that? Yeah. Heat All right. I'm Sounds vaping good. on the uh, Heat Vape Invader Mini. Um, 40 watts on the Atlantis V2, 0.5 coil. With, uh, this is some do-it-yourself juice that uh, Fresh O3 sent me. Pretty good stuff. It's like a banana cream caramel vape. That's what I'm hitting. Nice. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I'm actually using my my new IPv4 with the limo, and I'm also checking myself out on my new mirror that I got here too. <laughs> and, and yeah, I look pretty good through that mirror, and uh, and I got some loopy juice in here, and I'm sporting my new hashtag hit that shit wear. <laughs> It'll be a big seller, everybody. Jump on that shit. Limited edition. Oh, yeah. Motherfucking Lupe. What are you what are you doing there, Brian? Uh, well, I was actually blowing lines off of my mirror. <laughs> 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 there is a use for this fucking mirror. By the way, speaking of this mirror, oh, I'm vaping on the IPV four. Same as uh, Mikey over there. And I have my Kalanis on this one, and I have another IPv4 here, which has my Kanger uh, subtank mini with the nickel coils. Right, Mike? Nickel coils? NI 200 coils? Yes, baby. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm throwing a whole bunch of juice around. I got some uh, unicorn milk in here. I got some breakfast at Tilios in here. I have some steel vapor in here. I have the whole – I'm running the whole gamut here. I got vape everywhere. So, um, I don't know. I'm looking at my microphone as if that's my camera. I don't know what the hell's the matter with me, but welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to the show. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, speaking of the IPv4, inquiring minds want to know, because, you know, we've dropped two reviews already, and I know BK's got one in the pipeline. Um, wh what's, your, what's your feelings, Mike? You've had two days or three days with it now. What's going on with you? I think this is the best device that ever came out in the market, in my opinion. No, nah, seriously. <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, I like it, and I don't like it. I mean, if it didn't have the mirror, I'd be fine with it. But uh, it's all right. I mean, I don't take this out with me. It's it's like holding a brick anyway. This is more for for me for inside the house, and inside the house, the screen looks beautiful. It looks nice because there's not a lot of light hitting me. But if you're outside, you can't see. But uh, performance-wise, awesome. If you want a temperature control device for under 100 bucks, and it's 100 watts too, it's great. Easy access to your batteries. I actually thought I wouldn't like this uh, plastic, uh, whatever you want to call the sleeve, but uh, it actually feels nice. It's easy for me to get to my batteries. Buttons are nice. Vapes well. I got a nickel build in my limo, and beautiful. 
But um, yeah, it's got its issues, but I think the pri with the price point that it has, it's okay. I'm happy with it. Brian? <laughs> well, I've been on a mod quest lately. Um, I think all my SMY reviews have been getting to my head because <laughs> I have been trying to modify shit that I'm unhappy with. So last night, uh, just to fill you guys in that are watching, uh, BK, Mike, and I were chatting on, just like this, and we were talking about the mirror and how, you know, it was really tough to see in the daytime and how, you know, and by the way, I was on Skype last night with one of the guys from I, from Pioneer for You, trying to give him my opinions about uh, what was wrong with the IPv4. Because, you know, doing reviews, I do them for the purpose of trying to get better products for all of us, including myself. You know, I want good shit for harder money, and uh, that's the whole purpose of all this. And and we all want satisfying vapes. So I'm chatting with them, and I'm telling them about. You know, the mirror I didn't like. It would have been nice if this uh, outer thing would have been metal just to add a little bit more high-end feel to it. Um, even though, I actually, I do like it, like Mike said. I mean, as flimsy as it kind of feels a little bit, like it feels a little hollow, it does actually work really well, and it pops closed really well, and your batteries fly out of here real easy. Um, but there's some... There was just, a, you know, I know what happened, and, and I talked to him. This is the deal. The IPv4 was designed months ago, okay? When they originally were going to release it, they talked about it being a 100-watt mod, but it didn't have the Yeehee temperature control chip in it. So Pioneer for You had already published and printed all of the manuals. That's why in the manual you have the two-button click for locking the screen, and you have the, um, uh, the, well, I don't know about the charge capability. That's a whole different fucking problem, but... Uh, the two-button thing and a couple of the other things. Oh, the touch sensor. You'll notice it in the manual it talks about having a touch sensor and disabling it. So they put the cart before the horse, and then they said, oh, shit, the market's heading more toward temperature control. We need to step our game up and, and do something about that. And they were rushing to push out this you know, temperature control chip and have it work. Well, the fucking problem was is that they didn't take the time to print the new manual. So this is what I told them, and they, 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 he agreed. Who... Uh, you know, whether they do it or not is a whole different story. I said, why don't you do this? Come up with a brand new manual and post it on your web page. I'll promote that you have this new manual and also make a video explaining why you did what you did, what happened, and what you're going to do about it. And he agreed. So whether that happens or not, you know, I have no idea. But besides that, in terms of pure function of temperature control, it's been working good. I enjoy the mod, I think, for 70 bucks in that range. It, it, it really is a nice mod. The best thing about it, I have a, a, va a DNA40 Vapor uh, Shark, and I have my uh, M-Class, which is a better chip, by the way, but it fucking drains batteries quick. This thing has been a brick shithouse in terms of battery life. It's been really, really good, and it vapes really good in temperature mode. Like uh, I said before, too, uh, about what I don't like, I mean, in temperature control, you can't uh, lock your preset, what you like, your jewels where you want it to be. That I'm not worried about because I'm sure they're gonna flash it. There's gonna be some kind of update to flash that to fix that problem. So that's something that's fixable. The biggest con of it all, I think, is obviously is the mirror, which is unfixable unless you're a clever person. You do uh, something very clever with it if you want to do it, right, Brian? Yeah. Um, by the way, for any and thank you for leading into that, Mike, because I was gonna sh I forgot what I was even thinking a little bit ago. Um, last night, I decided to modify my screen a little bit, and you'll notice that there's some black on here and black on here. I had the black coming down here, um, also sort of boxing out the screen to get rid of some of the mirror finish. And the problem was is that I'm OCD and I wanted to make it perfect, so I started etching it a little bit to make it perfect and I ended up fucking over scratching and I ruined the whole thing I did last night but if you want to see the completed look go to my Instagram I posted a picture last night of what it was looking like when I was almost finished so um, real quick you know two little uh, two little bolts or screws in here um, one 
and is it just one? On the inside, I think, right? On the inside. Yeah, 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 you're right. On the inside, there's two. One on the inside, one on the outside. And uh, once you take this cover off, this the, the this little mirror screen here pulls right out. It's like there's two little tiny pieces of like sticky tack that are holding it in because the way the case clamps down, that that holds everything in place. So. Um, you could do vinyl. You could even go to like you know your your hardware store and BK. You were saying this last night. You know if you have a drill press or something, you could replicate this screen and replace it rather easy if you wanted to. But you shouldn't fucking have to. Right. That's the part that's fucking fu infuriating for me. This shouldn't have been this way. It just it's a poor poor. They should have sent samples out to reviewers before they finalize production. Period. Every company fucking needs to do that. Yeah. Please, if you're listening, yeah. wait a month, send your shit out first, let me fucking tell you what is wrong, and then, then you make a great, great product. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Question, Brian. Uh, an idea. Since you talked to uh, IPV, getting the screen out is, is easy, right? There's no disconnecting wires or nothing. No, there's no wouldn't disconnecting it be, wires. Wouldn't it be nice for them to maybe offer that piece for do-it-yourself? Yeah, sell sell spares maybe make different shades of color for it or something. I don't know. Exactly, that'll be nice. And uh, no, I didn't haven't had uh, problems locking the resistance or resistance problems. Someone asked that. Joseph yeah. Ricardo, Ricardi. Yeah. I think the biggest problem that they have is that they they also don't want to have you void the warranty by opening it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's always a problem. But then again, I mean, with the new V mesh that you and I got, the whole way of changing the outer, <laughs> the outer metal was to fucking open the bottom and have wires fly out. Yeah. So, uh, we'll talk about that later, maybe the, the V mesh. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, what I also did though in my experimentation, if you notice here, um, my M class, the black on here was really messed up. It was getting scratched up really bad. So I got a can of Plasti Dip, and I, uh, you know, took one bolt, uh, two bolts, and then uh, ended up Plasti Dip in this, and mark, you know, getting everything off. There's a little juice from my fingers on here, but it came out really good. I mean, the finish looks good, and it's pretty clean. So, if anybody scratches their mod, Plasti Dip works really well, and it holds up because I've done rims before with it, not anymore, but I've done it before. And you can go through the car wash with that shit. You can do a lot of stuff, and it comes off later, so it's not permanent. Right, BK, Mr. Mod, Moderific? <laughs> That's a nice tip, dude, and I think I'm going to do that to both of my SX minis. You know, if for nothing, just preventative maintenance to keep them from getting scratched up. Yeah. BK, Another, I wanted to talk about, just for a quick second, is uh, also the charger, the 9-volt charger that's on here. I had stated that uh, I don't think it's safe. I'm not sure what's in here, if they put safety measures for you to charge batteries that are in series in here. But uh, maybe you could, maybe you can't. I have no clue what they did in here, and do I trust them? No, because the IPv3 had the same issues. And another thing, they never included the charger in there. So for them not to include the charger makes me wonder, is it safe? And uh, I'm not good at explaining it, but BK could explain about series batteries better than me in charging. What do you th Tell them about... Well, you know, in my opinion... You know, when a series battery discharges, you know, they're basically they're stacked one on top of each other, and it's going to pull naturally more current from one battery than the other. So when you go to recharge them, this one is fully charged, this one's halfway charged, and it's still pushing more and more current into both of them to charge them. So one will become charged normally, the other will be, can potentially become overcharged. That's where the uh, safety issue comes into play. Yeah, potential, someone's potential about, safety issue. Right, someone's writing that ye he has balanced charging. Okay, we know they have it, but was it placed in here? That's we don't know. We're not 100% sure if it's placed in here. That's the whole point. And for them not to give you the charger makes you wonder, right? Yep. So I wouldn't I'd use take it. Take a chance. I wouldn't use it. I would have felt more comfortable if they just left that feature off, personally, you know. So, I don't know. Their excuse is they forgot to put it in there. 
I don't get how you forget to put a charger in there. <laughs> that makes no sense. They didn't. For, they didn't forget. No, yeah, they didn't forget shit. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's they did it because of liability issues and uh, people uh, having problems with them charging, and then they have to return their devices, or or if it even blows up or something. I don't know what it does. I don't know what danger there is to that. I, I don't know. Does it blow I up? I, I have know. a multi-million dollar corporation, and I'm going to just fucking ship and forget shit in my box. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. No. No. You know, they're, they're, they're dancing around, like, SMY territory with better chipsets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dancing around it. I wouldn't say they're in SMY territory, but... They have a revision on the market that they just came out with, uh, Pioneer for you. It's the, the new IPv5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, SMY. What about that one that you did? Uh, the SMY sixty, Brian. Ah, good. That's good. good question, Mike. <laughs> that chip is supposed to be pretty good in there, right? Um, you know what, Mike? I would say the answer is no. Oh no, huh? And the reason it's not good. Is because there's a delay when you fire, and I think this once you start getting used to these Yeehe chips that like fire up instantaneously, having a delay just pisses me off. Uh, I want immediate vaping, and you don't get it from this. Now, with that said, this device physically feeling wise and looking wise is a beauty. It's a gem. I mean, it looks really, really good. Um, but they should have put a spring-loaded 510 in there, and they didn't. I shouldn't have had to put a fix on this so that it didn't rattle when I put my cover on. Um, if you haven't seen my review, you guys can watch it. So it's like one more time. Just And you know what, BK? You're absolutely right. Just like Pioneer for you did with the IPv4, SMY is done on every single device I've reviewed for the past. Everyone thinks I'm like being sent devices from SMY. SMY doesn't want to get shit in my hands because I tell the truth about their devices. And I'm sure they don't like hearing all the shitty products they're putting out and having me post reviews on it because nobody else does. Yeah, You know what's shocking, though, is that I don't know how they even put devices out like that with their chips. I'm going to show everybody now something that I have. I've already uh, made a video for it. I just haven't put it up yet. I'm waiting for the right time. But uh, I will. this is like a first time. Look now. I'm going to show everybody what I have in my hands. All right. As you can see right here. This is a vapor shark, RDNA, and this is a clone, by the way. All right, there you go. You guys can check out the screen. It's got the small screen. Vapor shark clone, 50 watt, no temperature control. It's just a 50 watt device, and it's the size. It's a. It's this practically the size of the RDNA 40, and. Um, the build quality, no button rattle, spring loaded, 510, it's unbelievable on here. Instant firing, this chip has been performing, and this is a clone company. So a clone company is making a device like this, and then you see these other companies with chip delays and firing delays. I just don't get that. There's no excuse for it. There's no excuse for that because... If a clone company could make a device like this, that's, I mean, I even told the guy, I'm like, dude, you guys should make your own stuff. Don't clone stuff. Make your own. You know, you guys you guys made a beautiful device here. If it's a clone, but at least it performs. And yes, then you've got all uh, authentic, <clears throat> authentics, and they don't perform. It's not like they would have even had to stray from the original design too far to make it not a clone. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, they didn't uh, have to do anything crazy. Just change the shape of it a little bit. It's a 50 watt. Someone's asking. And I got the, what's it called then? Is it called Kaluthu? Cthulhu. The Cthulhu. I got the Cthulhu on here. And uh, it's pretty nice. I'm still calling it the Tulu. Who gives a shit? Cthulhu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Whatever. I also got a review. I actually recorded this. It should be up tomorrow on this RTA. It's pretty good. I'm impressed with it. I love mine. Yeah. 
until I got until I started playing around with this Atlantis V2, it never left my hand. I've been, yeah, that that Atlantis has been kicking ass for you, hasn't it? I love it. You know, and it's mind blowing to me because I hated the original Atlantis, at least the coil heads in it. That's why I never reviewed it. BK. Yeah. Question for you. You have you have the M class and you also have the fifty watt Invader Mini. Yeah. What's been your experience between the two of them in terms of performance, you know, how it vapes, things like that for temp control? I mean, obviously the M class is better, okay? You know, if you're talking value, though, the Invader Mini, this is the best steel on the market. The temp control works flawlessly. It's a DNA 40 style temp control, so you're going to want to build a little higher, you know, like 0 0.1, 0 0.12. Um, but this, you know, I can't complain about this device. I mean, battery life is decent. It's a 50 watt device. It's a DNA style chipset. Um, the only complaint I have with it is there's a delay on the fire, but you get used to that. You just press the button as you're bringing it up to your mouth, and it's fine. You know, it, it seems to be really smooth power delivery. It's not that real jumpy PWM. Um, it is waterproof. I've thrown it in the sink like a full sink basin, thrown it in there, walked away for 10 minutes, came back. I mean, I didn't leave it sitting for hours, but, you know, so it is fairly waterproof, uh, shock resistant, I, you know, taking on construction sites. And uh, to me, this was a, this mod was a long time coming for the community. I, I think this is great. You know, I have to bring okay. my nice mods out and wreck them. Yeah. BK, commenters are, want to see the your SX Mini. Real men uh, use pink. It says, you know yeah, what? Um, it's... I'll, I'll take that, and I'm going to go get it. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to the bathroom. Don't lie, BK. Everybody, He's going to the bathroom. everybody wants to see it, BK. Go get it. Well, I am going to rub one out real quick, though. Good. <laughs> Someone Mike, asked, Mike yeah. I, have a pen, I have a pen cam set up in his bathroom. <laughs> Everybody's asking about the Vapor Shark. A few people. Uh, it's a 50 watts. It's 50 watts, and there's no temperature control on here. Just a 50 watt device. I see a, uh, a couple a couple other people asking about the how's the temp control working on the IPv4. Yeah. And uh, my experience with the temp control right now, I have the nickel coils on my uh, Kanger Mini, and uh, it works amazing. It works just like my M class in terms of temperature control. You sort of have to set your joules and your temperature more by feel and flavor than temperature because it doesn't regulate the temperature in real time. But in terms of performance, once you have it nailed, it's fucking awesome. I mean, it really is a I, great mod. Yeah, I have right now. I got a nickel build in my uh, Limo, and uh, I have a 0 0.11 ohm build, 420 degrees Fahrenheit at 30 joules, and the flavor is unbelievable. Perfect. Uh, in my review, there'll be a link for the Vapor Shark. I'm not 100% sure who's going to have it, so are people asking that. But there'll be a link to where you could contact the manufacturer, and he might even be able to sell you one, or he'll tell you where to get them. But I'll find out more. Well, here's the, here's the pink M class, boys. Here it is. Isn't that lovely? It looks like your salmon towel. What's that? I said it looks like your salmon towel. <laughs> the salmon towel is quite muted compared to this. This thing's pretty loud. <laughs> well, I like a, it, though. I think it's nice looking. I like it. I personally don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It, it, it works good. It looks good. You know? It'll match my boxers. <laughs> I don't have pink boxers. I have a lot of pink shirts, though. So I can I can color coordinate with my outfits here, fellows. So some people had asked what the best value temp control on the market is, and I would have to say the Invader Mini is probably... How much is the Invader Mini, Mike? Uh, you could get it for, like... I think uh, I saw, actually, a uh, Gearbest. Uh, actually, on my link from my video, I have a coupon code to buy it from Gearbest. And I think it comes out to like $53 free shipping, something like that. Yeah, I've seen them, yeah, between $55 and $75. Yeah. 
depending where you look. So, yeah, that's the best value. Yeah, I think bar none. Yeah, that's the best value out there. Then the second one would be this, the IPv4 for the price. Yeah, I mean, if you want a solid, you know, 50 watt daily carry device, so you don't have to work worry about like you construction guys and stuff. Yeah, the Invader Mini is probably one of the best deals on the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I. My my SX minis have been sitting since I got this thing. I know you've been rocking at it every day. It's great. I don't have to worry about it. You know these nicer mods. You know I get nervous. I don't want to chip them and shit. I'm like real OCD with my stuff. Well, we we want to all see you do the gangster lean. All right, I got the Derringer on here. What is this? It's like a .5 build, 50 watts. Nice. And by the way, everybody, BK is the originator of the gangster lean, not me. He's he's the godfather of the gangster lean, right there. <laughs> oh, thank thanks for giving me the credit, Mike. I appreciate hey. it, buddy. <laughs> for anybody that's interested, um, myself, Mike, and BK are going to be at a vape convention. It is on the 9th, Saturday, we're going to be there. Yep. And it's going to be in Hamburg, yes, we are. Hamburg, PA, which we don't even know what the fuck <laughs> that is. But we're going. Mm -hmm. so road trip time for the vape team. It's out near Redding, it's near Redding Pennsylvania. <clears throat> near Redding, Pennsylvania. You know what would be fun, guys? I was just thinking this just now. It was like a moment <clears throat> of uh, brilliance that I had. If I brought my laptop and we could connect to Wi-Fi there... We could do like a, a real quick live show of the vape team at the show. See, that would be cool. You know, just That'd on the really fly. Cool. And no, you know, we don't. I don't want to set a time or anything because who knows what our schedule is going to be and what space they have. But if we did it live, just any time, and you could catch it, good. But if not, it would have a, we'd have a replay up anyway, so you guys could watch it. Would you guys be interested in seeing that? Yeah. By the way, it's called a uh, vape Ep vape expo. It's in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. I don't know if any of our peeps that are watching know about that or live close by. Everybody wants to know if we have the vape team van going. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking badass, wouldn't it? BK Baracus will be driving. BK <laughs> Baracus at the wheel. You know what? I think I'm going to go to that vape convention with a pair of like Oshkosh coveralls on. Nice. I don't so have any gold, though. Yeah, I don't have any gold, though. <laughs> hey, I'll let, you, I'll let you borrow mine, though. <laughs> yeah, Mike rocks the shit out of his gold. Yeah, That's Mike's what? got a few Mr. T starter kits, I'm sure. Yeah, well, these were gifts for my wife. Right here. Johnny, you know, I've got, I've got one herring, herring bone somewhere. I don't know where the hell it is, though. I sold all my gold when the spot value went up into the almost 2,000 range. I sold my shit like a crackhead. <laughs> Cocaine is a hell of a drug, bro. I sold all my shit. To, I sold all my shit to support my channel in the beginning, buying all these devices. Yeah, that's what I mean. I have my wife. Uh, I have my wife on the street corner. I Mike said, doesn't even have a TV or a car anymore. Yeah, you need to be an earner. <laughs> Uh, well, vape, vape life. What am I gonna say? You know. That struggle, though. Ah, what are we gonna talk? Oh, I want to ask you guys. Are any of you guys getting the new uh, Silo Beast tank from Beyond Vape? Is it available for sale yet? Is it a pre-order? Yeah. Did you pre-order? Yeah, there's a pre-order going on right now. Well, I'm gonna I fucking never heard about the thing for right now. I think it gets it's it being released tomorrow. Tomorrow they start shipping what is out. It? It's the Silo Beast. It's a top fill. Uh, basic uh, takes the Atlantis coils in there. Top fill. Nice. Very sexy. Did you watch uh, Suck My Mod today? He had his IPV video. Yeah, I watched that. That tank was the Silo Beast that was on there. Oh, 
okay. Yeah, and he had the nickel. He had the nickel coils in there from uh, what do you call it? Um, for the Atlantis inside. Okay. I kind of fast forwarded through it because I, didn't, I, you know, I really wasn't interested in the whole thing. I wanted to see his his limo follow up. Yeah. Someone someone asked if the Silo Beast has an RBA. No, but I'm pretty sure the Atlantis's RBA section that they're coming out with should be compatible. You would think, right? I would think. And I'm sure I'm sure the Any Vape uh, RDA will probably fit that. That. Yeah, but that one doesn't pants. screw down all the way. It leaves a gap. Supposedly, I, I don't know about that. But the, that to, that's what Tony said. Yeah, uh, Vapor Trail. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking on their website right now as I'm sitting here trying to see how much it costs. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Should it be under new arrivals or something like that? New arrivals. Or new releases or something like that. They have new arrivals. Uh, I don't see it here though. Yes, yeah, scroll down a little. You'll you'll see it. Not, they don't have it right in the beginning. Ah, here it is. It's a sexy looking tank. Yeah, silo B. So so they have their own coils that are beyond vape coils but they're just like the Atlantis coils mm -hmm. and uh, they sell them also so it looks like it holds five mils of juice it has a double side uh, double cyclops style adjustable airflow for maximum vapor and it has a top cap precision threaded to make removing and refilling so it's top fill uh, 0.5 and 1.2 ohm organic cotton and it uses Atlantis silo and yeah, Mike, you already went over all this, Mike. I know. And uh, they also have a shorter 2.5 milliliter tank and sleeve, which is also available, but it's sold separately. Nice. So, but I have to say, it is a sexy looking ass uh, beast. Yeah. Kind of I mean, like BK. A sexy beast. Remember the silo tank, the regular oh, silo. You're making tank. me flush, Brian. <laughs> the regular silo tank was nice. You know, so it's basically a silo. It's a silo tank on steroids. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah, how this it's silo is more nice look. Yes, uh, Rania, I have a coupon code for GearBest. It's uh, in my Invader Mini review. You'll see it in the uh, in the description. If you want to get the Invader, there's a coupon code in there for the Invader. That'd be a perfect job for her. Or job mod, duh. <laughs> perfect job. Retard, I am. Well, working for your. Thinking about her job, I know she. I know she's a postal uh, postal worker, like a letter carrier, whatever the female version of the mailman call themselves these days. Male women. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to bring this up. I have a Goliath here. And one of the things that really pisses me off about having a YouTube channel is no matter what tank I review, no matter what, uh, you know, like I did my IPV video and there's some dude that commented and he's like, your clouds suck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what are you, fucking 12? Like I wasn't trying to throw clouds. I had a temp fucking tank on there, you know. But anyway, um, you know, so I post another video for the Limo 2 and this guy types, my silver play fucking murders your fucking limo too. Like, like I'm like you fucking asshole. I have every single RTA known to man behind me. I have them all. I have the silver play. I have the Goliath. I have the fucking the Goblin V2. I have you know I have everything. So now what I say about the tank doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. It's just my opinion about it. But everyone when I did the uh, Cthulhu, everyone's like the fucking Goliath murders that shit. Well, I have the Goliath here, and what the fuck is so special about this thing? I don't get it. I mean, the air, bro. Blow. It's got more air, bro. Clouds, bro. Clouds, fucking bro. Like it's like a bunch of twelve-year-olds. Yeah, dude. There, there is like this certain segment of the vaping community that is just full fucking retard. That I think they were. You know. Yeah. Like, seriously, and this is coming from a guy who likes to, like, sub on his dick off and blow gigantic clouds, me, you know? But some of these guys are just absolute and complete, total fucking retards. That's all I got. 
Michael Bannister wrote, oh, take some steroids with your silo while snorting coke on your IPv4. Welcome was, to the vape team, folks. I was doing that. I was doing this while I was reading it. I was like... <laughs> he knows us well. I need a straw. Hold up. Oh, look. Before long, we're going to be fucking borrowing money from people watching. <laughs> I'll be on my iPhone outside of a 7-Eleven fucking doing the vape team asking for money. <laughs> I think uh, the Limo 2, you get some nice clouds. I got a nickel build in here, and I think it's producing nice uh, nice cloudage out of it. I don't know. I don't know what these people are saying. Yeah, there is a big Limo divide out there in the world, it seems. It's Phil Basardo went off on a fucking rant of the century on, on his hate of the cloud chasing population. Did, Did you guys see that? I missed that. Dude, how about when he was filling up the limo? How funny was that? Oh my god. Yo, he, that was so he did that. that was funny, but it was also fucking pathetic too. Why would he do that? He was doing it wrong to begin with filling it. Because it's not made by Svomesto. <clears throat> Real and quick. It's a K-Fun clone. You know, I've done this a thousand times before, but I'm going to do it again. And I'm probably going to fuck up, but here's a fucking limo too. Here's a fucking dripper from a, a wide-ass-ended dri dripper, okay? And I'm going to put it on this bitch, and I'm going to fucking pump it in nice Saturday and fast, day. and it's perfectly fucking fine. doesn't pour out all over the table, Phil. You know, it's like, I don't know what he was doing, but I agree that it should have been a little bit wider, but when, you, you, when you're doing it like that, you're going to have problems. And he was doing it all fucked up, trying to squirt it right in the middle of the fucking opening, and it made it look bad. That's not fair. That's not a uh, an open objective review, in my opinion. Amen, brother. I want to know, does the nickel give better flavor in the Limo 2? The Limo 2 gives unbelievable flavor, and this nickel build in here with the loopy, oh, man. Awesome. Mr. Gary, I'm pumping it, baby. <laughs> Doing a little gangsta lean there. Little gangsta lean. Lean back. Lean back. You know, just just to make it clear, I fucking Dude, love. Rock aware, Mike. I love Phil Basardo, and I respect his reviews. And none of us bat a thousand. All of us have bad days. We get aggravated. We, uh, you know project our bad days sometimes into our videos. So I'm not hating on Phil, by the way. I just think that, you know, he did that a little bit fucked up when he was filling it, just to make it clear. Mm -hmm. I'm not hating on anybody either, but, you know, I just call things as I see them, and if I think someone's doing something fucked up or if I perceive that someone may have an agenda, I just say it, you know. Because we, we, we all have agendas here. Everyone does. You know, that's just the nature of human beings and how we operate. Speak the truth, brother. Hey, DJ Quits in the house. Howdy, Dave. Oh, shit. There go the property values. Speaking of calling a spade a spade. <laughs> that's why I love that guy. I've never seen a better battle between fucking DJ Quith or DJ Quith. And you know what? Fuck it. DJ Quith. <laughs> it just sounds French, and I fucking love it. Um, and, he is uh, French. He just doesn't want to admit it. He gets into beautiful battles with Phil, and I fucking love it. <laughs> uh, it's epic. Hey, hey, David, why don't you um, step up to the game, bro, and, and go talk to your boy Phil about the uh, Lemo 2 that he was filling on his, uh, on his review. He can't answer, by the way. Probably on his phone. Yeah. I'm reading comments here. Everybody's saying he's a mouth to lung type of guy. He's a 13 watt K fun killer. Nothing wrong with that. There isn't. You know? <clears throat> I just got a fuck you. I just got a fuck you from Jack Quith. Jack Quith got shouted out in the Grimm's vlog. Oh, yeah, he did. 
Yeah, he did. I gotta watch that. Yeah, I mean, well, it, was, it, was, it wasn't so much a shout-out. He got brought up in Grimm's blog because Grimm kept saying that he couldn't uh, get DJ Quit's messages or something like that because Google was blocking them as spam, which doesn't surprise me because he posts so much. <laughs> <laughs> he posts so much he's like a goddamn spam bot. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, you know, as long as I've been watching vape reviews... Which has been a long freaking time. DJ Quith has always been there, like always. Everyone's. I get you, sixty nine, Rip Trippers, freaking, you know, Bizarro, you name it. He was there. He comments on everything, on everybody's video, and it's like a whole story too. Joel's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, a mouth to yeah, love kind of guy. You know, it looks like some of our followers, including myself, I'm a mouth to ass kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ford. <laughs> I'm a throat hit chaser, personally. I'm a mouth to helmet kind of guy. That's just the way I vape. Give me some Max PG 80 <laughs> watts on a K fun. 24 milligram Nick. Yeah, that little fucking Derringer's hitting nice. This thing is lovely. Except, you know, it spills juice all over the place and spits in my mouth. But, you know, hey, it's like a rebellious girlfriend. Uh. <laughs> so, Mike, what do you got in the pipeline, Mike? Hold up, I'm mouth to lung in right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mouth to lung the Derringer. Let me choke this bad boy down here. I'm going to mouth to mouth. I mean, mouth to lung Mike at the conference this weekend or next weekend. Yeah, I'm serious. I haven't. I, I've been. I always mouth to lung. And uh, with all these sub ohm stuff that have been coming out, I've been sub ohming so much and lung hitting that I totally stop mouth to lung. And then I actually miss it. And I see the reason why. And I'm doing it right now. And. Mouth to lung clouds, Blair. Yeah. 25 watts. On the silo tank. Got the got the new uh, Aspire. What is that? The ESP 30 watt. Got that on the pipeline. I got the the Kluthu. Kluthu on the pipeline. I got the Vapor Shark clone in the pipeline. I got some uh, New Eagle ones, the colors, different couple of colors of their line in the pipeline. What else do I got? Oh, I got a bad memory. I got the Acme tank, some sub ohm Acme tank. Uh, what else on hand? I'm trying to look at my stuff there. Some juice reviews. Uh, I got the updated IPv4. That's <laughs> you guys didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got that. Yeah, well, they come out with a new one every two weeks, so that'll be the IPv4s. True that. You know what? I want some menthol. That's what I want right now. Grab a Newport. You gonna bust out the solo? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm looking for my the, the tank that I got I got solo. Oh, here it is. Oh, nice. I got my solo here in another silo tank. Let's see. I have the uh, Heat Vape Invader Mini review. That's going to be up tomorrow night. Um, I've got a Cherry Bomber clone. I've got the Arctic tank coming up finally. Um, the Kanger K box. Couple of uh, couple drippers. I think one other sub ohm tank. I'm forgetting some other shit. I've got stuff laying around that needs to go up. Well, I like this uh, this menthol from uh, was it Black Note the tobacco? This is good. Yeah, that stuff's dynamite, man. I always keep a K fun full of that. 
Shout out like to one Joel. Of them Shout out to Joel Tamaya. Tamayo, sorry, Tamayo. Shout you out, Joe. Did somebody just say new e grip? Yeah, new e grip, something. I don't know. Oh, really? It was, uh, what's his name? It was uh, ISB, no, DJ LSBVTS Vapes. <laughs> o L E D. Oh, it's probably got a screen. Oh, it's a, probably a new uh, device that's coming out, the new e grip. It's going to have a screen on it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Good, because that little dial thing was, you know, it was attractive, but as far as being functional, not so much. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, where I would think you had to lower the wattage, and it was actually getting stronger for me on mine. So I don't know if I was doing it right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a nice little device. Everything seemed fairly quality, but it was a little janky in a couple of respects. Oh, what do you, what do you got there, Brian? Oh, this Fill pipe? Us Fill us in. I want uh, that. This is a fucking beauty right here. Look at that little son of a bitch. That is a uh, Kanger Subtank Nano with a Smoke Guardian 2 E-pipe variable voltage, or variable wattage, I'm sorry. And uh, it took, I ordered this at the end of January, and I just got it last week. <laughs> fucking took for, I swear to God, when they, when they say slow boat from China, there was a fucking dude with oars that was rowing this shit from fucking China for me. <laughs> And it's okay. You know, now that you mention it, I remember you bringing that up when you ordered it. I completely forgot about that thing. I'm sure you did, too. Yeah, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Um, it's big as shit, though. I mean, it's a fucking Pomeranian, you know? <laughs> Can you do me a favor? Can you order me one for my birthday now? I should have it by October. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike, I will. Thank you. That's what I want for nice. my birthday. The order <laughs> It'll be here by October. So what what are the specs on that thing, Brian? Uh, well, you know, with any... I, I'd like to see a pipe mod come with a LiPo so they could have better battery life because, you know, let me... I'll open this for you guys and show it to you. It's real wood. It's got nice weight to it. Um, the button is a little bit... It's not... It's not rattly like plastic rattle, but it's metal on metal. So when you hit it, it's got a good throw and it's accurate, but... You know, and it's got a dial on here that you set. Brian, didn't you change that and put the simple? Uh... No, that was that's my other pipe mod back there, Mike. That I've had forever. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, this. If you take this off, look at the quality of this thing, though. Hold on, check this shit. And I have silo in here, by the way. The 1.2 ohm, because this is a 18350 battery. But check that out. It's fucking gorgeous, right? Look at the inside nice of that. Looking. Isn't that nice? Nice. Yeah. yeah. Mike Dean yeah. wants to know what uh, build I have. Take that out. Um, uh, I was just showing the inside of it. It's real quality. There you go. Pipe. Boom. Nice. Go ahead, Mike B. Mike B wants to know, Mike, what build are you using with the Black Note Solo? Uh, right now I'm using a 1.8 ohm coil from uh, Beyond Vape. <laughs> My... Uh, in my uh, Beyond Vape silo tank. It's a pre-made coil. Mouth to lung in. Yeah, it's good juice for like a Nautilus or a silo tank or a K-Fun or, you know, uh, like a Rose V2 or a Typhoon GT, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Something yeah. with a nice restrictive draw. I've used it in the Derringer. You know, with, uh, when I did my review and I had a point, I think it was a .6 ohm build in there, and it was very menthol-y. So if you want like a big boost of menthol, you do it that way. But if you want a nice pleasant I vape, tell you what, I actually like dripping that black note in the Derringer. Yeah. But uh, I actually like it better the the solo. I like it in uh, doing mouth to lung. Yeah, the black note. I'm you know, it's what's amazing about that stuff is that it's good enough that you can drip it if you want to. I mean, it's it's good juice. Very nice. I haven't done that in a while. Hmm. Don't mind me. I just shaved my head, and it's like 
rashy. It looks nice. I, well, no, I haven't shaved in weeks, so it's like rashy and itchy now. So, let's see. Let's read some comments here. Who wants to know what here? They wanted to know what the price of the pipe was. Huh. Uh, the price of the pipe, I bought this as an impulse buy because I saw it on Sea Vapor, I think it was, or something like that. But it was like forty dollars, but I think they fucked up when they listed it because it's usually like sixty-five or seventy bucks, so it's not cheap. It's definitely a guilty purchase type of buy. But I'll tell you what, nothing like it, and I fucking love it, so it's worth it to me. Uh, Johnny Vapes wants to know, Mike, is there really an e-grip coming out with the screen? I'm not sure. That's what DJ LSB Vape said. I guess he has a connection with uh, Joytech. He knows about that. So I'm going by what he just he wrote. I believe it. There's a rumor that BK has crabs on his head. <laughs> 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 nah, they're in my beard, motherfucker. <laughs> I think uh, I saw one jump at your camera. Mike B wants to <laughs> ask a question for Brian. Brian, can you ask your wife when E-Leaf is coming out with the iStick 50 watt with temperature control? <laughs> <laughs> We haven't been talking lately. We're fighting. <laughs> hey, honey, when's that new iStick 50 watt with temp control coming out? Leave me alone, you <laughs> asshole. Well, I heard her from here. <laughs> She's just mad because you've been on Pioneer for you's dick. That is true. <laughs> but I'm on Skype. She jumps jealous. out. Goes, what the fuck? So, Brian, seriously, what do you think? Do you think that uh, E-Leaf's going to come out with a temp control? Well, they're definitely not sleeping. There's no doubt about that. And I hope that they're aware that um, people are having some issues with some of their devices. So, you know, they work more diligently on quality control with the next... Uh, you know, I think people... They've already gotten the attention of the market. Now they need to raise their prices just a little bit to sh ensure quality. You know what I'm saying? And then they need to come out with a device that really knocks the knocks our socks off. So what was the deal with the so something happening? I'm reading here, Johnny. Who is it? John John Secula. They didn't even address something about the I stick 50 watt exploding. I didn't hear nothing about that. I've heard about it. Yeah? Yeah, I ha I've had a couple people post. There's, there's been a few of them from what I understand. Yeah. Now, do you guys think that's a charging issue? you think it's an issue with charging? More than likely, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Could be anything, though. Could be a bad canooter valve. I don't know. It could be also that uh, I think if you could use up up to 0.2 ohms on there, right? Lowest. Yeah. 0.3, wasn't it? I think that when what people are doing it at 0.2, it gets very hot, and I think that's where the issue is. I don't think it could really handle the 0.2. Yeah, it's too low, and but it but it allows it to do it. Yeah. I haven't heard of anyone exploding. I've heard of them like getting hot and then catching fire, but sort of melting, which still fucking sucks. Yeah. You know. Well, what do you want for the price? <laughs> I hate to say that, but right. You know, and we're kind of there. We're we're kind of there in this market, you know. And they also mass produce and sell so many of them that I mean, if you search iPhone fucking exploding or iPhone fire, you'll see thousands of posts about that. Now, there are millions of people around the world that have them, but anything that has an internal battery or even a replaceable battery, there's always going to be risk from environmental factors, the electricity in your house, the outlets, you know, fucked up wiring. Um, the list goes on and on. The heat, temperature, humidity, all that stuff matters. So, mm -hmm. the, the risk we play to vape the way we do. Someone wrote, there's also, hard was easy. there is also an auto-firing issues. Joe Rogers wrote. 
I wonder if that auto firing issue is a button getting stuck, perhaps. Oh, I could see that. Let me see. I'm trying to read some comments here. Oh, there is a video on YouTube of an iStick 50. What auto firing? John Secula. Wait, wait a minute. Isn't that John Vape? He changed, put his last name to Secula. Yeah, I think it is. Was it Vape John? Was his name? Yeah. Vape John. Yeah, that's Vape. Vape. Okay, that's Vape John. All right. Oh, it's the same guy. He changed his name on uh, YouTube. All right. Yeah, I haven't I uh, haven't seen anything yet on it. I just heard of uh, the iStick 50s. There being issues with the uh, 510 and not working, not firing, stuff like that. Minor, but uh, not exploding. Yeah. I think the only time I ever heard of it actually exploding was uh, Brian. What was it? Uh, what was his name? The guy that we were on the reviewers queue with. I can't remember him. Uh, oh fuck, thesis. Thesis. He had said something about that, about one exploding. Was it his or? Nah, it was in the news or something. He was saying, I don't know. It sounds like a cool story, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> I take anything with a, everything with a grain of salt until I have something in my hands, and you know. Yep. You know how the internet is. Yep. Brian, what do you got upcoming? Uh. I'm sorry, I, I got caught up with the fucking eGrip news, and I was somebody said on the website for the eGrip on uh, Joytech's website there was a picture of it, and I don't see where it is on here. So I'm sorry I got sidetracked. That happens. I I don't I have attention problems. Um, what do I have coming up? Well, I got this. Oh, I got the CLR heads for the uh, CLR heads for the Ego One which is the rebuildable heads. These are really fucking interesting. Let me tell you. Hold on. Um, this has the rebuildable in it right now. And they come in a pack of five. Right? And the price is 14 bucks for five. But the interesting thing is, is that here I'll I'll open this right now. Really a rebuildable in a pack of five? Yeah, look at that. These are all rebuildables. Now it doesn't have a build deck per se, but it's sort of like those those ones that were for the uh, smoke. I don't know if you ever had the smoke RBA. Yeah, I actually uh, just gave it away in a giveaway. For one yeah, of let me, you know what? Let me take one of these out. I'll show it to you because this is pretty fucking cool. So, so do you put your own coils in there? Yes, but they're already rebuilt with a coil when you get them, so I don't know why you'd buy the stock coils. And and by the way, it looks like Joytech revised the Ego 1 because they were having leaking issues. And I noticed on the coils and also inside the new Ego 1s I got, there's a little lip for juice not leaking that I didn't have on my old one. I noticed that they, that too because today I was messing around with them. Yeah. Even, the, even the button rattle is gone. Yeah, that I had. I, was, I did it in my uh, video. I was like, oh, no button rattle. Have yeah, either of you heard any issues with the Ego ones with them uh, having problems with charging? Yeah, they get hot. I haven't what had problems. About, what about like just failing to charge completely? Not me, and I have five of them, six of them, and really? I haven't had any okay. problems. But check this no, out. I ran, into a, I ran into a woman at a vape shop who was having problems. That's why I asked. Oh, okay. The standard coil is a vertical coil, right? So the, the RBA is very similar to the Kanger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's a horizontal, and it's open on the bottom, right? So the way it works, and they have they have a how-to on their on their website, but you unscrew this, and there it is. See? Yep. Pretty fucking cool, right? I'm just confused how, how with all five packs of it. How do the wires attach? There's a there's a whole other thing that unscrews at the bottom. See that threading? Yeah. And then they show you where to put the wire at the bottom. One one goes in, one goes out. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 
So that's it. Anyway, I'm sorry to share and run, but we have run out of time once again. Too much fun here on the Vape Team. So I want to thank you, BK. It's always a pleasure. I want to thank you, Mikey Vapes. I want to thank all of you guys watching, all the new subscribers. Uh, thank you. And if anyone's waiting for my giveaway announcement, I already hit 10,000 subscribers, so I appreciate all the support and love. Uh, I will be making that video sometime this weekend to share who you, who won the uh, stuff I'm giving away, so thank you. It's just been a busy week with the re new releases and stuff. Um, but that's it. So thank you from me to you. I love you all, and uh, I will see you next week and this week on my videos. So, BK? Well, I also have a uh, 2,000 subscriber uh, giveaway that's coming up. It's going to be in one of my videos. I believe I'm, I believe I'm going to throw it in at the end of the Heat Vape Invader Mini review tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. If you guys are interested in a giveaway, I'm going to be giving away two items tomorrow with that. And the winner will be announced probably around Wednesday of this coming week. All right? Very nice. And uh, also myself. I actually have a 5,000 subscriber giveaway going on right now. If you go into my video section, you'll see it there. And I'm, give, doing, I'm giving away five items to five lucky people. So if you haven't gone on there and watched the video yet, Go watch it. Maybe you guys will win something. So, um, yeah, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, let me get a hit of the shit for all of you before we sign off. Nice. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> we're not done yet. Oh, Somebody okay. asked a question about the future of the vape team, and that was the title. By the way, I... I procrastinated and uh, I created that title right before we started the show so uh, the future of the vape team is in the now you are we are living into the future together um, no we do have we do have some stuff coming up we're gonna do some giveaways we're gonna have a contest where one of you guys can be on the show soon we're gonna have a next week we're gonna have a special uh, vape reviewer on uh, it's gonna be a secret until he comes on or she comes on perhaps uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. The future's looking bright. We're here to support you. We get your love and support, and uh, we're going to do this shit together. So if anybody's going to be uh, around at that convention in Hamburg, we'll be there so you guys can meet us and we can hang out and have a vape. Anyway, love you all. Have a good one. Peace out.